These last couple sections of the chapter has to do with Empire's Law. Now, Empire's Law, by the look of it, looks very similar to Gauss's Law for electric field. You can sort of, first of all, do this for magnetic field, but since there's no quote-unquote point charges for magnetic fields, they always come as a dipole, this integral for the flux around any closed surface ends up being zero, and that's Gauss's law for magnetism. But because they do form these circles, we have another law, which is Ampere's law. The integral is a little different. Instead of integrating the flux around a closed surface like a bubble in space that encloses a certain volume, we now have this BDL thing, dot product, and that ends up relating to the current that's enclosed. So here, we're integrating around a closed loop. So instead of a bubble in space, we have a rubber band that kind of stretches. Of course, most likely we'll do kind of circular loops for the symmetry of it, but we don't have to. Just like how we used to take spherical surfaces, cylindrical surfaces, we don't have to. Any general shape will work. In any case, as it turns out, similar to Gauss's law, we have come up with this integral, which we call the circulation integral. But most likely, because it's not as common as flux, we usually refer to simply as the, the line integral around a closed loop, or just simply line integral. If you go around the loop and integrate this BDL term, that term is directly proportional to the amount of current that that loop encloses. Or you can think of how much current goes through the area encircled by the loop. So in concept, it is very similar to Gauss's law. We do need a lot of symmetry for us to make good use of this formula, just like Gauss's law. But it is true in general, just like Gauss's law. The slight difference here is instead of talking about flux around a closed surface enclosing a volume, we have a closed loop enclosing an area. Then the last bit is how do you define positive or negative? Back in the day, when we had the closed surface, this particular dot product is defined to be positive if you go out of the surface and negative if you're going into the surface. Here, this integral BDL talks about the way you go around the loop. So it's actually easier than to define what's positive or negative current back the other way. So if you go in a loop like this, a current that pops out is known as a positive current, whereas a current that goes in is known as a negative current. And if you are somewhat astute, you will notice this is yet another right-hand law. So here, if you use your finger, it's another thumbs up one. If you use your finger to curl around that loop to follow your integration direction, your thumb points to the, what defines as positive current. So this is Ampere's law we're dealing with. And so the first set of questions is to simply kind of dazzle you by asking you to find this funky term. And of course, now that we've done a bunch of Gauss's Law question, we know better. And instead of working on this side of the equation, we work on this side. So basically all they're asking is how much current is going through each of the loops. If you look at loop A, you see that as you go around, it seems like the current in here goes up. And then if you use your right-hand rule, you'll see that the positive side is basically on this side. And it doesn't matter if it's an angle or not, as long as it crosses through, we take it wholesale. So here I is positive. So you get this integral. And that's the only current you're enclosing, just the one time. So it's just I, because that's what the current is. You see that these are going to be done very fast. So here we have the I enclosed term. It's going to have, again, Using your right hand rule, this is going to be a negative i. This here is going to be positive i, just because of the way it swirls. Try to 
notice these kind of shading. These shading here implies that that part is underneath the loop. So we have i plus negative i. So that gives us a zero. So therefore, if the current enclosed adds up to zero, then then by Ampere's law, that line integral is also zero. Part C, again, the current is again positive. So just like part A, line integral is simply mu naught times i. And then for part D, it's a little confusing to look at, but it definitely seems like that we have kind of like a slanted loop that cuts across the corner. In any case, you can see that it goes into the loop and then out of the loop where, if you use the right hand rule, it looks like that this guy is being positive and this guy is going to be negative. Again, i minus i equals zero, so that integral, yet again, it's equal to zero. So just a quick introduction to Ampere's law. And we'll through the next few examples, see how we can make use of Ampere's law, which once again requires a very high degree of symmetry in order for it to work.